If, if you look at consumer brands, uh, the, the Nestle's, P&G's, Danone's, yeah. those kind of brands, that's what we're talking about here. They sell through the supermarket. Yeah. Let's be honest, in the past, it was really easy for them to be successful. There were two things that were important, penetration in the supermarket and awareness in the, in, in the, uh, in the, in the audience, yeah. for yeah. your audience. So they talked with supermarkets to make sure that they had a great shelf space and they bombed the entire planet with their advertisement. Today, we see changes in the market. The power of retailers has increased uh, and as a consequence, they have their own brands that they push. And, and of course, then the big brands are, are losing market share. In terms that's suffering, uh, that, that's making them suffer on the, on the penetration side. On the other side, the impact of mass media is decreasing. Yep. So I think that they have to face reality that the old model is at its end of its lifetime and that you fundamentally have to rethink the way that you go to market. And it begins with innovation. Uh, I think in, in the world of, of packaged consumer goods that the innovation was way too incremental. It was about a new packaging, about a new label, about the yeah. strawberry taste instead of banana taste. That's what they've been doing in the last 20 years. Today, you really need to look to what brings value to the market and, and, and create that deep understanding of the market and then come with innovation that really brings value. I think that's, that's the first thing you need to do. The second thing is, when we look about digital, I think they need to figure out some new skills and create new skills. The first one is a direct to consumer skill. Yeah. Where you figure out a way how to get your products directly to the end user. Uh, and you feel how certain brands, big consumer brands are experimenting, experimenting with that. Like Unilever had their Magnum ice cream, their flagship brand. In, in big cities last year, you could directly order that through Uber Eats. So they had these central locations and then you can get your Magnum ice cream when you were sitting in the park and you said, I crave for an ice cream. That's so that, that's, an, yeah, that's, that's nice. an experiment that they've done. But I think we need to go further in this and really develop a direct to consumer mindset. That's, that's a first digital skill that you need to train. A second one is change the way that you communicate. They grew up with mass advertisement for everyone. Now in the digital world, they're basically copy pasting their experience from TV to Facebook. Yeah. It's not always a good idea because in the digital world, it's more about personalization. So maybe instead of creating this hugely expensive 30 second or one minute video that they then push through Facebook, I would recommend them to see if they, for instance, could make 100 types of advertisement really targeted to specific audiences to make sure that the message becomes more relevant. That's the strength of digital communication. You don't go out to the mass, you find something for a small, very targeted audience. And because of that relevance, they will order that product and more. And if you have a direct to consumer relationship, you can order it directly. Otherwise, hopefully they will go to the retail uh, world. So that's the digital part. Then it's worthwhile to think beyond products. Okay. Uh, in, in my model of my latest book, The Offer You Can't Refuse, I have four layers. Huh? I have a product service um, as a minimum requirement, digital as a minimum requirement. I just talked about the impact of digital. But then you have partner in life. How can we add value in the, in the life of customers? And I think fast moving consumer good companies need to think in that direction as well. How can they use their strength to go beyond selling just a new product and a new taste to yeah. me? A great example, in my opinion, is Procter & Gamble. With their Pampers division, they created a spin-off where they go directly to the customer. And the customer of Pampers are young parents. And young parents have worries, are concerned. Uh, they're concerned about the fact if their child is eating enough, if it's sleeping enough, if it's still breathing while it's sleeping, um, and they need to get new diapers all the time. So what they've done at, at Pampers, at P&G, is they created a whole package that you can buy from them with a smart mattress, smart camera, smart diapers, and you can monitor every statistic of wow. your child to know if it's sleeping well, if it's eating enough. And of course, it's automatically reordering diapers over and over again. You don't have to worry about that. And they grow together with the child because they can even see how big the child is, thanks to the camera. Yeah. And there you have the direct-to-consumer model, you have the technology aspect, but it's also going beyond selling diapers. You're helping me with all my concerns when I have a little baby in my house. And they created a new business model around that, a subscription model, direct-to-consumer, going beyond the product. That's, that's another aspect. And then the top of my model 
Uh, we have good product service price, we have digital convenience, we have partner in life. The top of the model is changing your world. How can you use your strengths to have an impact on society? Here, I would advise consumer brands to think beyond sustainability, because if they hear change in your world, they all think, oh, we're reducing plastic in our packaging. And it's great, they need to do that. But I think that the whole aspect of sustainability in consumer goods will become a minimum demand mm -hmm. quite rapidly. The challenge is, can you create more value for society in a different way than just sustainability? Can you add social value? Can you, you know, help people with a healthy lifestyle? Yeah. Um, think about those things. And, and, and for me, this comes to fundamentally rethinking the way that you go to market, fundamentally rethinking your relationship and really acknowledging the fact that the old model of penetration to retail, mass communication through traditional TV channels is at the end of the life cycle. And today, most of those organizations know that, but they don't act upon it. And they just are stretching the life cycle of the existing model and I think that is a dangerous strategy if you look at the evolution of retail and other aspects in the market.